it's very very difficult to to delete it but uh, it's uh, what we have to do i think uh, it was a very accidental game right from the start when we lost um, running the straight away losing pablo and then the way we conceded the first and and the second goal and against this type of opposition all of this makes life almost impossible but um, yeah there are things to learn obviously that we cannot not consider to keep evolving in what we are trying to do but as well we have to be open and we have to analyze the game as as it went i suppose one of the novelties of this period of fixtures and in this case it's going to be a benefit for us is that you're going to play so often does having another game as quickly as this brighton game work well for you in terms of that mental process of just moving on and leaving that game in the past yeah every time you lose a football game you want a revenge straight away and and that's what we want, myself, the staff and, and the players. And we need to see how many players we have fit for the game because it was a big hit losing um, three players in key areas that at the moment we are very short. But uh, we have to adapt. We're going to have a lot of games. We're going to be playing every three days with the schedule that the Premier League has given us today. So it's going to be a challenge. Thanks, Mikel. If I can come next to Paul Gilmore at Sky. Hi, Mikel. Hi, Paul. Mikel, has David Louise played his last game for the club? I don't know. Um, I told you when I was talking to you guys last night that um, he's very open. He's a, he's a man, he's a leader. And um, I was sure that he was going to speak in front of everybody. You hear what he said. Um, he was very direct with us too. That's what I value from him. What I, that's what I like from him. Um, but at least we need to be fair on him and me personally I'm going to defend him with everything I have because I believe in him he's shown me a lot of things in this time here and his career speaks uh, by itself You said as recently as Monday that he, he would be somebody who you value both on and off the pitch as you've alluded to there but if he does leave at the end of this month is it fair to say that would be for more business reasons rather than personal? Well, we cannot forget the financial situation and the way that um, COVID-19 has hit every club and, and the economy in general is going to have an impact. What the club is doing at the moment is assess the situation and try to clarify a lot of uncertainties that we have in the future. And we have to make big decisions, but time-wise it's difficult to fit them in our needs. We are trying our best. The club is trying their best. And it's difficult sometimes because it puts the player or, or our sporting necessities um, in a difficult situation. But again, we have to adapt. Is what it is. And um, that's why I wanted to protect David yesterday. I, that's why I didn't start him. But it's a funny game. And after 20 minutes, you need him. And, and it's a player that has been with a lot of uncertainty in the last few weeks. Kia Jurabshin suggested there are several issues in the club's whole structure at the moment. How much turbulence is there behind the scenes? What is a, a tough time for, for all businesses? I think for all businesses in general, a lot of clubs are going to be in a lot of positions. Uh, don't forget that we have accepted as well a, a pay cut, not only the players, but the staff on board to try to help the situation, which I think it was an incredible gesture of unity and commitment from everybody working at the football club that I'm very proud of. So there are consequences, you know, when the people that are running the club are very responsible and what they want to don't want to do is put the club in a difficult position. So in order to do that, let's analyze first how our finances are going to look like. We know that we have to improve how we can improve it and let's see what we can do to get um, the club to the position that deserves. And just on Mesut Ozil, uh, what, were the, what was the specific tactical reason? Are you able to, to shed some light on that? And also, how did he take the decision? I've been very open from, with Mesut from day one. Um, and uh, since I joined, and I thought that he was fit and he was willing and he wanted to perform at the level that he can do. He's played every game with me, I think. Um, so that's it. The moment that I see that he is ready again to do that, I will treat him like anybody else. I think I've been more than fair 
with him and I think he has responded in many games the way I want and and that's it. Just a final one on that. Why was he not ready? Was it to do with any sort you you, you mentioned tactical? Why why was he not ready to to to, to play? No, it's a lot of happened to him in the last um, few weeks, and I have to respect uh, the timing of every player that needs sometimes a little bit of time. It's been difficult preparation in the last two months to get players ready. And again, I'm the first one that wants Mesut at the best, and I want to put him on the pitch when I think he can give his best. Thanks, Mikel. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Mikel, just before we move on to the next question, can you just tilt your camera um, down a bit so you come up the screen a bit? Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, right. Big build up for George, who had trouble last time. Oh, various, we had trouble too. So, um, George Cummings from the BBC. You got me, Mark, this time. Hello, Mikel. Hi, George. Um, it's just on Meze. I just wondered how does he react when you tell him he's not playing? Does he get angry? Does he get upset? Does he ask you questions? He was very, very well with me. There was no issues at all. He doesn't, but does he, does it, does he say to you, why aren't I playing? My conversation with Mesut, they're going to remain between him and me. What I can tell you is that there was, it was completely fine, honest and clear conversation. That's it. And in terms of this job you've taken on, you showed signs before the coronavirus that Arsenal had turned the corner. But have you found this job really difficult at times with the problems you've, you've faced with Aubameyang and his contract and now David Luiz? It seems a lot of issues in your first, first job as a manager. I cannot deny that it's been some big challenges in the way, but as well, I, I feel so privileged and honoured to be in the position that I am. Every decision I'm going to make is to defend the club first the best possible way and then get the players on board and get their trust, get them behind me to believe on what I'm trying to do. And they seem very convinced. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of rocks at the moment in our way. Last night we had a, a few more, but I am more convinced than ever. We had something against us that is time. And in football, time is difficult to buy and patience is a little bit difficult to do. But um, I am convinced because um, I've seen it with my eyes on a daily basis, a process that it takes time and time and time. And the moment they pick it up, they're going to be flying. But um, yeah, we need a little bit of time because a lot of things happen more than we expected in this process in the last, I've been here five months, I think, but we've been three months at home sitting, you know, but uh, a time in football is difficult to, to buy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I bring in an Adam from Premier League Productions? Hi, Mikhail. Hello. Um, just just after last night, how do you see the the picture at the top end of the table? What's it going to take for Arsenal to to achieve their goals this season and finish in the top four? Have you, have you still got the confidence you can do it? I said uh, before that we started after the virus and from a position that we still have a lot of teams in front of us and we have to go game by game. Last night is over. Um, we have to learn from what happened. Uh, we have to analyze the game as it happened as well and be fair on our analysis. But um, you can see the difference. Um, and at the moment, in the process and in terms of the squad, and that takes uh, a little bit of time together, which I think in the first 30, 35 minutes, we competed really well. And, and we were a threat and we make it very difficult to them. But at this level, the moment you give them something to that type of opposition, they're not going to make any mistakes there. And it was clearly yesterday that um, that, I was, that was happening. So from now on, game game by game, it's still the same ambition is to win the next game. And that's it. And a lot of things are happening in between. And let's see what happens. Just on the Brighton game at the weekend, obviously they won at the Emirates earlier in the season. They've still got the lingering threat of relegation. What's your assessment of, of Graham Potter's uh, first experience in the Premier League as a manager? I think he's changed completely the way Brighton plays. Um, he sounds very convincing. I think the players are buying as well into what he's doing. Um, 
they are a threat. They showed it at the Emirates that uh, if you are not at it on the day, they're going to create a lot of issues. So we better re be ready because it's going to be a really tough game for us. Just finally, uh, Eddie and Katia obviously started the game. You've obviously got a lot of faith in him. What are you looking for from him? What do you need from him for the rest of the season? And how do you assess his development this season? To keep doing what he's doing and <laughs> the way he played last night against those players in those difficult conditions. Um, for me, it's extraordinary as his age. He has an immense personality to play. Confidence He's powerful. He's developing in every area, I think. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of faith in him. Do you think this situation that they're playing at the moment will help the younger players and their development, all of them? Yes. The, the, the trick here is, um, is to get them with the right environment around them, you know, and not to put too much pressure. We have a really young squad, uh, a very inexperienced squad. And when you put that in certain parts of the pitch very close together, you can see that uh, they have some deficits in the decision making is not always the right thing to do. But um, we are in a position that we have to accept certain things at the moment in there, probably more than we would like to because the circumstances that we have. But at the same time, it's great, you know, because it's uh, a great value for them to have these kind of experiences and see themselves playing uh, against that type of opposition. Thanks, Mikhail. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Um, can I bring in now Ian Abrahams from TalkSport, please? Hi, Mikael. Hi, Ian. Hi, yeah. Um, you mentioned before the financial situation. Um, does that mean you don't think we'll see big transfer fees this summer? And what about players who want big contracts, the likes of Pierre and Rick Aubameyang? Do you think that might be more difficult for clubs with this coronavirus situation? Well, I think there is a lot of uncertainty on how the transfer market is going to look like. You hear very different things. People are going to go all in, people or clubs that are spending already a lot of money and others that they've been much more conservative and wait and assess the situation before they move on. Our position at the moment is that we have to see, you know, and we have to be cautious. And uh, yeah, our ambition is still intact. And I know from the owners that their ambition is still intact as well. So we will try to do our best to improve the squad, maintain the players that we want to maintain and, and move forward. So you won't have to lose footballing talent on the pitch that you want to keep because the owners can't afford to keep it? I don't know. Today I cannot answer to that, unfortunately, because there is too much uncertainty. Um, finally, Brighton were one of the teams that really wanted to play home and away, not have neutral grounds. They were very insistent on that because their home form is normally very good. They get a lot of points at home, but that's because of their crowd. You've obviously played now once behind closed doors. You know what it's like and they don't. Is it going to be a real leveller on Saturday? Or in fact, do you have the advantage because you've already played once in these very unusual conditions? So I think to talk about advantages now is not... Uh is not very important. Uh, we are all adapting. Uh, the experience from last night is very, very strange. It's from the moment how you traveled, how you get to the stadium, the feelings that we have during warm-ups, during the game is completely different. So I think we are all adapting. We experienced yesterday, we can talk about things that are needed uh, to raise that level of motivation as well and sustain that. But um, I don't think it's going to be a big issue. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So that's the end of the broadcast section. <laughs>